In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to change axis labels from images with Photoshop without damaging the original images but still producing high quality output images. This is the image I'm going to be working with. Um, the things that I want to change are these axis labels or the titles on top. I want to change this text. You notice the word frequency here has been cut off and some of the measurements are a little bit smaller than I'd like. So I'm going to open this in Photoshop and I'm using version CS3. And the first thing I'm going to do is give myself a little more working space. So I'll change the canvas size of the image. By now the image is this wide and this high. I'm going to change both its width and its height. And you can see it made it transparent on the edges. Well, I don't want it to be transparent, so I'm going to make a new layer <laughs> by clicking this button. And I'll drag the layer beneath the layer with the chart. And I can click and hold this button to access the paint bucket and I will make sure my color is white and then I will fill the background with white. I can zoom in and out by pushing control plus and control minus I'll hide these so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the labels that I don't want. I'm going to do this by first selecting the chart layer and then I will draw a small box around the labels that I don't want and I'll select them and I hold down control and press X. That's the same thing as clicking cut, edit, cut. It's the same thing. So control X, control X, control X. I'm satisfied with the quality of the numbers beneath so I'll leave those as they are. The next thing I'll do is add some black titles to the top. I'll select the text tool and write CG derive RRI intervals or R to R interval. I'll select the text and change its color to black and I can change the size of the text by dragging one of the corners but I don't like how it stretches it so I'm going to hold down the shift button while I drag one of the corners and it will, lo it will lock it so that when I drag it, it drags it and stays in the same perspective. I'll press enter to select it, drag it where I want it, and I'll create a duplicate image or I'll duplicate the text layer by dragging it over this button here to create a copy of it. And then I will drag the new version directly down and change RRI to NNI. And then I can start working on the axis labels. I am now going to work on adding text to the axis labels, specifically frequency here and power over here. So I can copy this layer by dragging it over this button. And then I will move it. And note that when I move text, I don't actually click on the text. It does work if you click directly on it, but it's easy to accidentally click one of the edges or to click the middle by accident. And when I do something I don't want to do, I could click Edit, Undo, but a faster way to do it is to hit Control Z. That will undo the last thing you did. So I'm going to change the text to Power um, Milliseconds Squared, and I will select the text and click on this text tool. And I just want the two to be in superscript, so I'll click this button. And then I want to make the axis label font size a little bit smaller than this, so I'll hold shift to lock the aspect ratio and make it a little bit smaller. That looks good. Now I'll start to rotate it like this, but instead of eyeballing it and just estimating where 90 degrees is, I'm actually going to type it in here. Negative 90 degrees. Click the select tool and it asks if you want to apply the transformation. I click apply. I drag the axis label where I want it, and then I make a copy of it like we described before. Now they both look good, but they're a little too far away. I'll sum both by holding shift, and I'll click that. And then I can push the right arrow key a few times and get them closer to where I want them. That looks good. Now I need to add the frequency buttons, or the, the frequency labels. 
So I'll copy that layer and rotate it. I'll manually enter 90 degrees. Then I'll click the Select tool and apply the transformation. I will center it here. Eyeball. Center it. And that looks good, except this needs to be frequency in hertz. And then I will copy this. And instead of dragging it, which offers the possibility of not making it perfectly lined up, I will move it with the arrow key. But this is really slow. So I'm going to hold down shift and then push the arrow key, and that will make it jump quickly. So I get it roughly into place with shift held down, and then I fine tune it with the arrow keys. That looks pretty good. And then I will zoom out with control minus. And it looks good, except I don't like the fact that um, there's not very much space here. So I think the best way to do that, to change that, is I will click on the layer that has the chart. And you can tell it has the chart because if I change its visibility, the chart disappears. I'll select the layer with the chart. And I'm not selecting the text. It's only selecting the chart. So I click this button to select it, and I'll move it down by holding shift and pushing the down arrow one, two, three, four, maybe five times. And then I'll do the same thing with any of the channels that contain text that are in that region. I click the layers, and it will show me what's selected. So this belongs to the top graph, so I won't select it. This is the bottom, this is the bottom. I can select both of these by holding control and clicking them. And I know that the NNI is for the bottom as well. So now that I've selected all the text that goes for the bottom, I can move it down by holding shift and pushing the down arrow five times. One, two, three, four, five. And everything is in position. We're almost done. The only thing we need to do is to trim off this white border. The easiest way is to use the crop tool, and you can select where you like the edges, and then if you push enter, it'll crop it. But I'm going to undo that and show you another way. Um, image, trim. This will automatically crop it based upon the color of the background. If I select the top left pixel color, it will determine that the pixel color is white, and it will trim off all white borders, leaving me with a very tight cut. This is the smallest possible image with all of the, the edges trimmed off. And I could save it as a different types of files. I'm going to save this as a PNG file. It's similar to a TIFF file in the fact that you don't lose any data, and it's you don't lose any uh, quality of the image. If you save it as a JPEG file, you lose some of the quality of the image, and it's a slightly distorted, but it's a smaller file size. If you save it as a, save it as a TIFF file, you don't lose any quality, but it's a very large file size. The PNG format is nice because you don't lose image quality, but at the same time it offers some compression. So I'll save it as output 6, and I will view it here. I open it up, and there's our finished